In this video, I will show how to analyze and optimize the multi-core execution behavior of your Simulink models using Dataflow domain. To make use of multiple cores and improve performance, we pick the computationally intensive subsystem and enable Dataflow execution domain from the execution tab in Property Inspector. Upon enabling Dataflow, the multi-core contextual tab appears on the Simulink tool strip. Multicore analysis will do load balancing to maximize the utilization of cores. Therefore, before we can run the analysis step, we need to determine the block execution times, or in another word, block costs within the data flow subsystem. To do this, first we pick the cost method. On the left-hand side of the tool strip, we see that there are two methods for retrieving cost. The first one is cost estimation, which uses internal compiler to estimate the relative cost values for blocks within the data flow subsystem. The second one is SealPeel profiling, which measures the block execution times while running SealPeel simulation. We will pick the SealPeel profiling since it is a more accurate representation of the cost as it fully relies on runtime measurement. After choosing SealPeel profiling method, we select the software in the loop or processor in the loop depending on where we want to measure the execution times. For this example, we will run it on the host computer. Therefore, we keep the software in the loop or SIL as the simulation mode. Next, we hit the profile button. This will take some time as it will go through the steps of generating code, running the generated executable, and retrieving the measurement data. Once it's complete, the results will be shown in the cost editor below. So the profiling is now complete, and the results are shown in the cost editor. Here, the cost values for individual blocks are shown. The unit of measurement is microseconds, as it's indicated on the column header. The bars on the right represent the relative load for the blocks with respect to the most expensive block. As we now have the block costs, we can run the multi-core analysis that will automatically assign blocks to threads and show the results. At the left of the Run Analysis button, we see two edit boxes. Here we can enter the constraints based on our target environment. The first one is maximum number of threads. Leaving it auto will determine this number using the available cores on the host computer, which is six for my case. The second constraint is the multi-threading threshold, which is the lower bound of total cost at which the multi-threading overhead is justified. I'll leave that as auto as well. Now let's run the analysis. Upon completion of the analysis, the results of partitioning are shown in the thread highlighting legend. Here, it shows that the blocks are partitioned into three threads. Using the legend, you can individually highlight all the blocks that are mapped to each thread. To get more insight on the results of the analysis and get suggestions, we can look at the analysis report and suggestions panel. The first thing we notice here is a suggestion for increasing the concurrency in the model. We are suggested to add an algorithmic latency to increase the throughput of the model execution. The data flow of subsystem defines a latency of zero, and the analysis suggests that we change that to one. Before we accept the suggestion, let's take a note of the expected speed up shown at the bottom of the analysis report. Without adding a latency, the expected theoretical speed up is 2.48x compared to single-threaded execution. Now let's click Accept, which will rerun the analysis and show the updated results. Here we see that theoretical speedup is 2.95x compared to single-threaded execution. This is a further improvement of 0.5 due to pipelining, but keeping the number of threads same as the previous non-pipeline configuration. With the multi-core analysis tab, you can also perform design space exploration by manually changing the cost of the blocks. The first three blocks are relatively more expensive than other blocks in the subsystem, which should significantly influence how the blocks are mapped to threads. Let's try distributing the accumulated cost for these three blocks to four blocks and rerun the analysis. By clearing the auto checkbox next to blocks in the cost editor, you can override the cost and manually enter a new value. When we look at the results, we see that the number of threads has increased to 4, and the maximum theoretical speedup has increased to 3.92x. Using processor in the loop or PIL profiling, 
you can compare the execution times of single-threaded execution and multi-threaded data flow based on the available cores on your system. When we profile this model on a dual-core Raspberry Pi, we obtained 1.9x speedup utilizing both cores. In summary, using the multi-core contextual tab, you can iteratively analyze and optimize the multi-core execution behavior of a data flow domain based on the constraints for your system. Thank you for watching.